So this is the barrel that came out of the rifle. It's a 18 inch stainless, 416R stainless barrel from Palmetto State Arms. Didn't have a lot of luck shooting this thing, even with a federal gold medal match, uh, Sierra Match King, and 168 and 165 grain. The best groups I could get was 1.75 MOA. So I decided to get a new barrel. And what we are replacing it with is this guy right here. This is a Ballistic Advantage heavy profile fluted barrel. So a couple of differences here. One, we can see that we're moving from a mid-length gas system to a rifle length gas system. So that should take the recoil, some of the recoil out of it. But to be perfectly honest, with the silencer coat brake I was running on the front of this and with the gas turned a long way down, there wasn't a ton of recoil, but this will make it even nice to shoot her. Nice, more nice to shoot. But you can also see that the profile is quite a bit thicker. This, I believe PSA calls this their medium profile, but it looks a lot like a kind of a government style profile where it's actually slims down quite a bit and oddly enough we can see that apparently palmetto's 18 inches is ever so slightly different than ballistic advantage 18 inches but i just wanted to weigh these barrels so you could see the difference that that amount of extra diameter actually makes So the Palmetto State Armory barrel is two pounds, eight ounces. And the Ballistic Advantage barrel is two pounds, almost 14 ounces. So it's a little bit heavier, um, despite how much, you know, additional diameter it has, the fluting actually takes a big chunk of the, uh, of the potential weight out of this, this barrel would be easily over three pounds if you bought just the, the heavy barrel profile without the fluting. Uh, anyway, we're, I'm going to go ahead and toss this in the rifle. You guys can, can watch as I do that, and hopefully, even though it's raining right now, tomorrow the weather will be nice enough that I can go take it to the range and put a few rounds down it and zero the rifle. All right, here we go. Mount the PAC upper into my vice blocks. This is a nice set of vice blocks. This is cross tack. Um, it's actually designed such that it's reversible. So um, on one side, I can actually put an AR-10 upper, and then if I flip this block over, I can put an AR-15 upper, and then this chunk down here will actually fit into the magwell of an AR-10 and an AR-15 as well, which is kind of nice. Um, I, I have another set of blocks that's just for an AR-15 that I got off of eBay. Couldn't find an eBay, cheap eBay set. Um, for the AR-10, and I found this, it does both. Ends up I just use it for my AR-10, but that's fine. Alrighty. Just dust some oil from the factory on the barrel. Just get to grab a patch, wipe it off. Do a quick test fit, and there is some slack that slides right in. So when I get a, a barrel that does that, uh, I tend to bed the barrels. And what I use to bed the barrels is Loctite 609.
This is actually a retaining compound. This is this is stuff that's actually designed to do exactly this work with work with slip fits as opposed to a lot of people use blue Loctite, which is really a fastener. Um, it does work, but it's that's not the intended purpose. This is actually what this stuff is designed for. And it is possible to get this stuff back out. Um, you end up having to tap the barrel out with the hammer, but it will come back out. It's not it's not permanent. And all it does really is swell to kind of take up the space. I'll make sure we don't get any of that into the chamber. And in fact, I just kind of wipe off the last little bit just so it doesn't move down as I slide the barrel in. One more time to make sure this stuff doesn't get onto the threads at all, because that would be bad. Next we go with the barrel nuts. Now as you can see, this particular barrel nut has a pretty fine slot in which you gotta fit a tool of some nature uh, in order to tighten it down with a torque wrench. So, me being the cheap bum that I am, standard crow's foot I bought off of Amazon as a kit, and then if you look, I basically put it on the die grinder and just ground it down till it was narrow enough to fit. Uh, kind of ghetto, but it does work. For AR-10s, what I like to do is start off at at least 50 foot-pounds and then from 50, I'll uh, crank it up to, to get the, uh, the hand guard to line up because I don't have a problem on an AR-10 going all the way up to 70 if necessary. But generally speaking, if I start at 50 and tweak it the minimum amount necessary to get the hand guard to line up, I end up around 60 and I'm, and I'm okay with that. So here we go. So there's 50. And that actually lines up pretty damn well at 50. So I will call that good. Hero was nice enough to send a little tiny patch with their logo on it. That's pretty cool. Actually, I'm just going to toss it on my range bag. Believe it or not, I'm actually running out of room for patches. Because I bought a bunch of nothing fancy, dumbass civilian patches, because I thought that was hilarious. Okay. That working out okay. Move on to the gas block and tube. This is a superlative arms gas block that actually Ballistic Advantage cells, you can buy them with their barrel. I kind of bought the, got the full kit, so it's a, it's a barrel, gas block, gas tube, and a bolt. And Superlative sends their own pin. So I guess I'll use the one that Superlative sent with their gas block, as opposed to the generic one that comes with the gas tube. But we'll, we'll test it really quickly in, to the gas tube to make sure it fits. Let me 
make sure your holes are lined up. Make sure the hole, the tiny hole on the gas tube, that's where the gas actually goes through. So that's definitely got to be pointed down. And then the holes for the pin, you just got to line up. Yeah, I'm checking to make sure that I got it facing the right way about 10 million times because I'd hate to get to the range tomorrow and find out my dumb ass. Did it wrong. Make it for a very short range day. That is not what we want. this be a lesson on why not to have a messy work area. Good with that. Okay. A lot of people will try really hard to align this. I had just eyeballing it. There are no indentations on the bottom size for the set screws because most of these barrels are sold with a pinned on gas block. But we're really lucky that the way they cut these flutes, there's a high point right down the middle of the barrel so I can line it up pretty damn good that way. similar now significantly different than the bolt carrier that came with my PSA uh, the PSA one actually functions just fine but uh, you can see that there's a whole there's additional meat on the one for the ballistic advantage hopefully slightly tighter tolerances so I'm gonna move my bolt carriers with just high temp wheel bearing grease, that's it. It's 
all these frog lubes and expensive things are nice, but I figure if I'm ever in a without rule of law scenario, really nice gun shop frog lube is probably going to be non-existent, but regular old bearing grease I'm going to be able to find. So that's what I rock. And it doesn't seem to cause any problems. And it's actually really easy to clean off too and holds holds carbon fouling pretty well. Just a, a thin coating is all I rock. Big bubbles, no trimmels there. Okay. Using a next level armament charging handle. First time I've used one was on this gun and works just as well as anything else. I like the big blades. Seems to work just fine. And now the worst part of this, one of the screws I knocked off when I was uh, trying to hammer the pin into the into the gas block was one of the screws I need to actually put the handguard back on. So now I gotta go find that. Last thing I gotta do is reinstall the muzzle device. Yeah, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the bubble level that on my scope along with a bubble level on the muzzle device to make sure that we get these lined up. No torque spec on these. I just kind of do it till it's lined up. as good as it's going to get. Okay. All right. There you have it. Uppers back together. Ready to go shooting tomorrow.